Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, I say unto you, praise ye the Lord. This is Pastor Carl Dell D. James Sr. coming to you as we do every Sunday at 9 a.m. to give God what God is worthy of. God is worthy of the praise. God is worthy to be praised. We should always praise God. This is He's a Wonder Music Ministry of the Apostolic Faith. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he came down from heaven, born of a virgin, lived a sin-free life, suffered for us, bled for us, died for us, rose from the grave for us, ascended back to heaven and sat down on the right side of God for us. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, Jesus, may be saved. And how do you obtain this said salvation? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This promise is not just for you and me, it's for all of our generations. For as many as come, there is room. The song says there is room at the cross for you. It even goes and say, although millions, and at this point in life, maybe billions, have come, there is still room for you. There's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. You don't have to feel as though, well, maybe I've waited too late. There's not enough time for me. Maybe I've waited. I, I, I can't make, no, there's room. If the Bible, though, since the Bible says hell is enlarging herself to accommodate the evil, how much more is God, has God prepared and will prepare room for those who diligently seek him? Yes, there is room at the cross for you. Today, as I was talking with my beloved spouse, which I love so much, I was listening, and I said, well, they said it was supposed to rain today, and it hadn't started raining yet. And then she said, here comes the rain. The rain is falling. And I started to think about the purpose of rain. Rain has several purposes. One, to feed, to water, to make the ground ready to produce and and give forth for the benefit and pleasure of man to wash away the dirt on the streets to let the birds take baths and a lot of people I don't like it when it rains well rain has a bigger reason than a picnic or I just wash my car or what have you rain has a big purpose in life and there are, are different types of rain. I said, Lord, help me this morning. Help me this morning. Help me this morning. We pray for the rain. We pray, Lord, bless us. Rain down on us. Let the rains flood us with your blessings. Now, that's the rain we don't mind. But there's a rain that God allows to come down to wash away the evil to do away with what man has done to pervert and corrupt what God has made to be his plan for mankind. If we go to the book of Genesis, the sixth chapter, it talks about the corruption of mankind. Now, 
it came about when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they took wives for themselves whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. And it goes on talking about the giants in the land and the things that they did. If we go down to verse 5, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. That sounds like today. And that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 6. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things, and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. Well, here's the good part. But Noah found favor in the eyes of God. Will you be like Noah? Will you have favor with God? When the wrath of God comes in that great day of the Lord, will you be as Noah? Will you be as Moses? Will you be as those who God have called and trusted in and, and put his spirit on and, and said, like his son, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Where will you stand when the rains of God come down? That is not the rain that's helping the trees to grow or washing away the dirt. Where will you be? Here it is, God, the almighty creator of everything, is sorry that he made man. He is grieved. The world at that moment had grieved God. I'm sorry I made you. I'm sorry that I allowed you to come to my beautiful planet and, and put you in charge and tell you to cultivate and, and do like I told Adam and Eve. I'm sorry that I made you disgust me right now. And it is like that in today. We are in a time where I'm sure God is sorry he made us. He's sorry that man is walking and destroying his planet. But we have an escape. We have a way out. We have a get out of hell free card. It is through Jesus Christ, who is greater than Noah, who is greater than Moses, who is greater than the apostles, who is greater than anyone that God allowed to be born of a woman greater than John the Baptist, who received the Holy Ghost even before he was born. Before it came to earth, John the Baptist received it. Why? Because how can someone unclean baptize that which is the cleanest, most purest individual entity in the world? So here it is in 2022. As I watch the news and I see what's going on around me, I'm sure that God is grieved once again. I'm sure that God is looking upon mankind and saying that they have technology. We can Google and Siri and iPhone and Android and Google and, and, and Pixie. We can do, we can find information instantaneously. When I was brought up, yes, I'm 54, glorious years old. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I was brought up, if you wanted to learn something, you went to your mother, your father, your grandmother, and if they didn't know, they told you, boy, go over to those. I, now, I want you to hold, your, hold yourself now. I won't we'll say a word that you may not never heard of. Encyclopedia. Ooh, it was a series of books that contained, at that time, almost any and every bit of information that you could look for, or the Farmer's Almanac. 
And then the greatest informational book there was was the Bible. But we went to that encyclopedia that they sold door to door. Nice, pretty books on the cabinet shelf that they treated as if it was, I don't know, the, the Ten Commandments. You got a book out and you learned and you, you studied for whatever you needed for school. Then you put that book back. You didn't you didn't uh, uh, turn the page, what do you call it, something with the corner. You didn't do none of that. You didn't you didn't do that bunny ear, whatever that term was, I forget at the moment. You didn't do that to those books. You didn't write in those books. You treated those books as if they were gold because maybe if you were lucky when you got older, you may have inherited those books. But now I'm so glad that I have inherited the book of all books, and that is the Bible. But you we're living in a time. Well, if you want to know something, you just call on one of the entities by name. And they would say, yes, or, hmm, or may I help you? What is the weather for today? What is the weather for tomorrow? Who is John uh, F. this? Or you can, you can look up Nelson Mandela or, or, or Martin Luther King and get great details. And, and we have become so lazy with technology that we don't even have to read it. We can sit back and it would read it to us. See, the encyclopedia wasn't reading anything to you, and if it was, that was that was that wasn't good. But you can sit back and say, "Hey, blank, tell me what is the temperature on blank at this moment," and it would tell you. It would read it to you. You don't even have to do a lot of work. I had some ear pods in the other day, and I realized that I could just say, "Hey, blank," and yes, may I help you? And say, "Well, look this up for a minute, or just a minute." This is what I found. And read it to me. Would you like me to continue to read it? Sure. Would you like me to look up? Yes. Now, I didn't have to pick up a book. I didn't have to get out the chair. So we're living in a time where you have no excuse about learning about God. I guess you was trying to see how was I going to bring this around. You have no excuse. We already didn't have one because of what Jesus did on the cross. Let me remind you. But now we absolutely have no excuse whatsoever. But the devil has realized that in the last 30 years, technology has bruised him even more. That he has now perverted and infiltrated technology. There was a time where if you looked up Jesus Christ, you only saw things pertaining to Jesus. I was looking up something pertaining to Jesus one day and naked women popped up and perverted pictures and information came up. Why? Because the devil is mad that we are now in a time where you can just look things up and, and find out information. So he's trying to continually do what he's been doing since the fall that he did when he tried to overtake the throne. He's trying to mess up what God has done. But I'm going to let you know today, whenever you listen to this, don't worry about it. He can't mess up nothing that God don't let him mess up. Remind you this, that the devil can only do what God allows him to do. Well, why would God let him do that? Because he's sovereign and omnipotent. He does whatever he wants to do. And we have a choice to serve God or to serve man. And maybe sometimes God wants to see if you're really serious about serving him. Are you going to get stuck or are you going to move forward? I was in a situation and we're still in it, but I'm claiming the victory in finances. And I start, I'm an analytical person. And I started to break things down in my head. If I had this amount of money and I can put this and I can pay my tithes and offering and I can do this. And then I realized through some further studies and something God allowed me to see that I was committing a sin. When the tough times came, I started to think about how much I needed to get out of it. And what I found out I was doing is I was worshiping money and not God. I got stuck. <coughs> Excuse me. I got stuck on my way to God. I got stuck on a resource and not the source. When you are in a situation and you need something, don't get stuck on the resource. Go straight to the source. 
I was stuck on money because I feel okay, if I had the money, then I can do this, I can do that. But see, you have to remind yourself that God's math is different from our math. For, for forever, one plus one will equal two with us. But with God, zero plus zero can be a billion. Anything God wants to make happen, he can make it happen. So we can't get stuck on what we see with our eyes. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews that it is impossible to please God without faith. Because if you get stuck on money and you don't get the money, then you're mad. Well, I can't go forward because I don't have this money. God said, well, 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 you know, you have me. And the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. And you've heard me say this over and over again. The, the hills belong to me that the cattle are on. The, the planet that the hills are on that the cattle are on belongs to me. The galaxy and the solar system that the planet is in that, that, the, cow, that the hills are on that the cows are on belongs to me. And everything therein belongs to me. So don't get stuck on what you can see, feel, hear, taste, and touch. Don't get stuck there. Go past that. Go past your what you think you need as far as money, things, and stuff. And there's this great big old God that's bigger than any problem that we can ever have. He's bigger than any situation that we can come up with. God is right there saying, just come to me. Just trust me. My wife and I was talking this morning and we had a personal conversation about some issues we're dealing with. Not... Everything isn't bad. Everybody's dealing with an issue or a, a subject. How do we do this and how are we going to do that and we need to do this? And and I'm sitting there and I'm like, Lord, uh, my wife is coming to me. This is the chain of command that you ordained. And now is laying in my lap. So how are we going to do all these things that my wife just said? How are we going to accomplish those things that seem like they cannot be accomplished. And my answer is God. So Father, as she brought it to me, as I'm speaking right now, as it was laying in my lap, weighing heavy upon me, I give it to you. I don't know how I'm going to work it out. I don't know how this and that is going to happen. But what I do know is that there is a man that sits on high and looks down low that sent his son to make a way out of no way. To where the road seemed like it's going to a hill. God can say, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell that hill to move. Or, 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 or either that hill can open up like the Red Sea. That hill, that mountain can open up like the tomb that the Lord was in and make a way out of no way. Oh, hallelujah. How is we going to do this? Giving it to the Lord. I can't figure it out. The song says, while you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. While you're in your scientific analytical mind trying to figure out how many dollars you need, God said, come to me. And I'll show you great and wonderful things that you did not know. I can show you how your credit can be bad and you can live in a mansion. I can show you how you can have a little and live a lot. I can do things that will make other men marvel at what I did for you. And all I ask you to do is tell them it was the goodness of God. All I tell you to do is trust in me. Lay on me. Rely on me. Give me your problems. You can't handle them. I know you can't. I made it so you can't. Give them to me. I want you to pass your problems to me and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I know I can't handle the problems in my lap, so I give them to you and I raise my hands. You can't raise your hands if you're holding your problems. You can't raise your hands if you're worried about things. Give the problems to God and raise your hands and say, Father, I'm my hands are up. I, I, I need a connection from on high. I I need you to pour down a blessing. I need you to rain down gifts like you rain down manna. I need you to rain down gifts like you provided quail. I need you to provide us with water as you did 
when he struck and, and spoke to the rock, I, I need you to part the Red Sea of my situation so I can walk across on dry land. I need to walk on the waters of my situations and get to where I'm going. I need to get in the boat even though the water is, is rocking and the waves are going. And I need to say in the name of Jesus, and they say, you know, I'm on dry land eating what you provided. I need to let my faith be so great that no matter what happens to me, I can say in the name of Jesus. Jesus, in God I trust. How are you laying down, Jesus, when the, the boat is about to sink? He said, oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Do you know who I am? Peace. Be still. I want to be able to say that. I want to be able to feel that and know that. Peace. In the name of Jesus, be still. Whatever our problems are, peace. Be still. Whatever we need, peace. Be still. Where two or more are gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst. If you ask anything in his name so that the Father would be glorified in the Son, he will give it. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness, all of his glory. And all these other things will be added. While you're trying to figure it out, he's already worked it out. Trust and obey. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of bills and depression and needs and want, health issues, finances, I will fear nothing because God is with me. Jesus preceded me and made a way and all I have to do is trust the illumination of his spirit and walk through the darkness and there will be the light at the end of the tunnel where he has made a way. When my back was against the wall, and I thought that it was all over. You made a way. Before the foundation of the world, God knew this day was going to come. Before the foundation of the world, an agreement was made. And a way was made. My sins were washed away. Everything that I owe was paid for by and with the blood of Jesus. So I'm free. Hallelujah, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. Why? Because on the cross, the certificate of decrees of every sin that I ever will and did create and do was already paid for when they nailed it, when they nailed Jesus to the cross. When he said it is finished, he paid for it. When he said it is finished, it was paid for. All your sins are washed away. You are free. Whom the Son set free is what? Free indeed. So as it's raining outside, ask God to rain down in your life. Ask God to flood you with his blessings. Ask God to wash away the sins and the dirt and the grime that's on the surface of your life and, and go into them secret places and wash away them those skeletons in your closet and the cobwebs and, and all of those things that are unlike him. Ask God to come in and rain down and flood you, wash you, cleanse you, and then fill you with him. He'll do it. They say, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Won't he do it? He already has. Just believe. Don't be like the world. Wicked, corrupt. Don't have God grieve whenever you wake up God mad. The Bible says he is angry with the wicked every day. Don't have God angry with you. Genesis 7, 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, enter the ark, you and all your household. And for you alone, I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. You want to be like that. You want to enter into the peace of God. Well, I might be too old. Well, Genesis 7 and 6 said, Now Noah was 600 years old when the flood of the water came upon the earth. He was 600. So what's your excuse? 
The flood is coming. The rain is coming. He made a covenant. He said it will never flood the earth again with water. But next time it will be fire. The flood that's coming is going to be fire. He's going to quench the land. He's going to burn up everything that you see right now. This is all going to roll away as a scroll. When this rolls away, guess where I want to be? I don't want to be in that rolled up scroll that's going to be cast into the lake of fire. I want to be hidden in the secret place of God under the covenant and the blood of Jesus. I want to see the new heaven and the new earth. I want to walk on those streets of gold. I want to walk up to Jesus and say thank you. So let the rain come outside. Let the rain come in your life. Because there's a great day of the Lord that's coming and you do not want to be a part of that rain. On that day, when that happens, there's going to be no Lord, Lord, save me. All uh, uh, ways of escape have been exhausted at that point. And the true wrath of God is going to fall upon everyone that's not covered by the blood of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the outer rain. We thank you for the inner rain to protect us, Lord God, for the rain of your wrath that is to come. We are saved by grace. We are saved by what Jesus has done on the cross. We're not saved according to our own activities or actions, lest any man should boast. But let us boast on what Jesus did on the cross. Let us remember what he did on the cross of Calvary. Let us remember that through baptism in his name, symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, and live a life pleasing in your sight. Lord, don't be mad at us individually. Mankind is wicked, yes. But individually, Lord, let us seek out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling because you are angry with the wicked every day. I thank you for the victory. I claim the victory. Everything that my wife and I talked about, I claim the victory. Every thought in my mind of how, I claim the victory. I don't know how, but I know that you do. I was in the bathroom thinking about how you know everything. You know every hair on every person, every grain of sand on every planet. You know the temperature. You know how many this is there and how many that is that. You know how many stars are in the sky, how many planets, how many solar systems. There's nothing beyond your knowledge. My mind can't even fathom knowing everything. So what's this? this is what I'm going to do. Instead of trying to fathom that you know everything, I'm going to praise you for knowing everything. I'm going to worship you for knowing everything. I'm going to lift you up. For you are the God of all gods. And I praise and magnify you on this day. Lord, there's a whole lot of things I could sit up and say, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't. But you know what I do? I don't know a whole lot, but the one thing I do know is that you are good and that you sent your son and that he is the answer through the Holy Ghost. So all I don't know don't equal or have anything to stand up against what I do know. So I'm going to bask on what I do know. God is good. God is great. Let me thank him for this life in Jesus' name. Amen. This has been Pastor Carl Dell D. James Sr. Executive Director and Pastor of He's the One of the Music Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Incorporated. Coming to you to let you know that God is good. I want you guys to look for a 30 to 40 second commercial that we're planning to do possibly today or tomorrow concerning our season of giving. We are in the season of giving from September 1st to I believe December 20th. We are in our season of season of giving. Uh, I plan to do a brief commercial about it to give you more information. And if you want more information before that, feel free to give us a call, 773-593-4972. Visit us on the web at www.heesawondermusicministries.org. If you feel as though this ministry is helping you, hey, support us financially. It costs money to do things. You know that. So support us financially. Everything you donate is tax deductible for this year. So if you want a million, want to donate a million dollars to get a tax break, hey, donate it to us. We'll give you a letter. I'll come bring you the letter personally in a brand new suit. 
I hear my wife in the other room. Hmm. Somebody donate a million dollars. Yes, I'm going to donate. I'm going to, unless you're in some faraway country I can't get to. <coughs> but within all reasons, reasonability, I will bring this letter to you personally. Or send somebody. <laughs> Either way, we need your support. We need your support. God is good, everybody. This has been Pastor James. Enjoy your day. I'm going to drink my tea and eat some breakfast and sit here and just think about how good God is. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.